Hi there, it's me, Teacher Mike from Phuket Pals. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pass the GED. Well, one way in which will help you anyway. And this way is knowing the subject areas. Too many students go into the GED, think it's going to be a gift, they think it's going to be very, very easy. And what they do is they don't study hard enough. They go in and they fail and then they wonder, what is wrong with me? What am, you know, what, why don't I know these things? Well, if you get to know the subject areas, you make your life a heck of a lot easier. So what are they? Well, in here we have Social Studies, Science, Maths and RLA, which stands for Reasoning Through Language Arts. Okay, now in the Social Studies test you have US History, Geography, uh, Civics and Government and Economics. Civics and Government is the, the largest part of the Social Studies. Um, US History is the second largest part and Geography and Economics are around 15% each of the final test. So the biggest chunk here is in Civics and Government. That's things about the, uh, the US government, about uh, politics in the US, about democracy, uh, about all of these things that make, that make the country tick. And uh, there's a lot of, in here there's a lot of reading, short passages, long passages. You have political cartoons that you have to analyze. You have to analyze graphs, tables, uh, photographs sometimes as well. So there's a lot going on in the social studies and this is causing many students problems at the moment because it is quite tough. Next, you have to know the science, life science, physical science, earth and space science. And just like the social studies test, in the science test there's long passages of reading, short passages, uh, graphs to analyze, graphs to compare with paragraphs. And to be honest, there's a lot of crossover in these two tests here. And that, I don't mean that crossover with content, okay? I mean that with the skills that are needed. Remember, the GED test is not a test of what you can remember. It's not a test of remembering what's in your book. It's a test of using skills. What do I mean by that? Well, when you're reading, let's say, uh, a piece of US history, maybe it's a, a quote or a short passage from a, pr a primary source, a source from that time in history. Well, you have to read it very, very closely to find out what this person is talking about. Okay, now when you read a scientific document in the science test, it could be an extract from a scientific document, you're doing exactly the same thing. You're reading closely. And that doesn't mean just reading it and thinking, okay, that was great, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad I read that. What it means is you're reading it, <coughs> you're thinking of the purpose, of why it was written. You're thinking of possible outcomes after this was written. You're thinking about who wrote it, why they wrote it, and all of these types of uh, questions that are actually called higher order thinking questions, okay? Um, you're digging a bit deeper into the reading and not just, not just trying to rem remember the narrative or the story of what happened, but you're kind of thinking about the why questions at the same time, okay? Um, know the maths. You've got things like numbers, operations, geometry, measurement, data analysis, statistics, probability, algebra, functions, patterns. And there's also a lot of uh, word questions in the mathematics test as well, which also is crossover with these two areas. So you need to read the word questions very, very, very uh, closely as well. So you can see this, this idea of close reading keeps coming up in all the different areas because close reading is the skill you need to go into higher education at university or college. It's a skill that you need in the workplace. Okay, so the GED test measures close reading skills and, and credit, it, it's a very important part of the test. So close reading is a huge thing and we'll do a separate video on that actually. Know the RLA. Okay, RLA stands for reading reading through language arts and it just basically means English reading and writing. It has different bits. It has the reading section which has fiction and non-fiction or sometimes known as informational texts. So the fiction could be from a classic novel. Uh, the, the informational texts could be things like uh, could be from uh, it could be from like a, a local council or a local government might have some documents. It could be like a um, something to do with voting or um, it'll be something that's it's not a story okay and you have to kind of analyze this document and then say what's going on um, by the way the non-fiction the informational texts are about 80 percent or so it, it, it's very heavy the reading test is very the reading component of the test is very very heavy on non-fiction and informational texts the writing 
component? Well, in there, that's, that's a multiple choice section, as is the reading, in fact. Um, and it looks at the kind of the mechanics of writing. So the grammar, uh, the use of punctuation. It looks at like, the organization of a text. Um, it might ask you to say whether one paragraph would be better in another, in another place, or you know, does it all make logical sense? Then we have the ER, the extended response, which it means essay. This is causing many problems um, in the GED world today. In the extended response, you get two passages. Um, they give a, an opposite opinion about a similar topic. You have to analyze these uh, documents and say which one um, has, which one you think has strong arguments. Well, they'll both have strong arguments, so you have to take out the strong arguments from them both and then evaluate which of the arguments you feel is stronger. And then most importantly, you have to say why you believe that to be true. If you don't say why you believe that to be true, then you'll get a big fat zero, okay? So again, you need, this takes quite a lot of work. But if you know your subject areas of social studies, science, maths, and RLA, you have a much higher chance of uh, passing your, your GED, okay? So uh, thank you for, for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and have a good day. Thank you.